How big a deal is Huawei's Mate 60 Pro? To understand the significance of Huawei's new phone, you need to go back a little bit to understand why Huawei is a company at the center of these tensions between the U.S. and China. Uh, Huawei uh, is, a, is a secretive, very powerful firm within China. It quickly became the biggest maker of telecom equipment uh, in the past couple of decades. After dominating that market, it became the biggest, bigger than Ericsson and Cisco. It became the biggest smartphone company in the world, surpassing the likes of Samsung and Apple. But then the U.S. did two things that really set Huawei back and ended up effectively knocking them out of the smartphone business. One, in 2019, they blacklisted Huawei. Uh, and cutting it off from many of the components that they would buy from the U.S. otherwise. And then last year in 2022, the Biden administration set up these export controls that were aimed at keeping all Chinese companies away from the most advanced semiconductors in the world. So when we saw Huawei very quietly drop this new phone, it signaled not just that Huawei was back in the smartphone business, but that China had capabilities in semiconductors that the U.S. had not anticipated. Does that mean that the gap between where China is and the U.S. is in terms of semiconductor technology is not as big as it was previously thought? That's right. The U.S. had set up these export controls hoping to keep uh, China at much less advanced uh, semiconductors. They cut it off from companies like TSMC, which is the leading uh, maker of chips in the world. What we found out is that with this Huawei chip, we did really the first authoritative teardown of the, of the Huawei phone and looked inside. And inside we found a semiconductor that was made in China by a company called SMIC, seven nanometer technology, which is not the most advanced in the market, but it's far beyond where the U.S. had set up these export controls. And it signaled that the U.S. effort to hold China back had not worked as effectively as, as they had hoped. Really, the U.S. had hoped to keep China eight to 10 years behind where the cutting edge was. And now we find out that it may be as little as four to five years behind. So what does all this mean for the U.S. Uh, and its clash with China? Well, the bottom line is people don't really care if the Chinese have advanced smartphones. The key issue here is not whether Huawei can sell a phone that competes with Apple. The real issue is whether these semiconductors can be produced in the amount of scale that could be used for other kinds of applications, including artificial intelligence, supercomputing, and especially military applications. So now the U.S. probably has to tighten these controls. To do that effectively, though, it really needs the support of Apple. Uh, it, it needs the support of its allies including the Netherlands and Japan in particular. And it's not at all clear that the Netherlands and Japan are going to go along. Those are the other two countries that supply the kind of key chip making equipment that you need to be at the advanced edge in this area. The leader of the most important company in this area, the Dutch company ASML, has been very publicly opposed to these controls. So it's not at all clear whether the U.S. and Gina Raimondo can get the allies on board with tighter controls on China.